Hey guys, welcome to Meet and Greet. We got a special video today. This video is uh, all about building the collector. I think the collector personally in, in the uh, smokestack is arguably the most important piece of your offset smoker. And the bigger you go on the smoker, the more important it becomes. So today uh, we have chopped up and edited an awesome video for you guys. And if you're in the process of building a, uh, an offset smoker, then this video is vital. If you're not building an offset smoker and you're just checking this video out because you're an awesome human being that loves barbecue content, then I think you'll appreciate this as well because it's pretty fun. So uh, we appreciate you hopping on the channel, giving old meet and greet uh, the support, and I thank you. And before we cut to the video, real quick, uh, it means it mean the world to me if you guys, I'm not asking for a subscription. Don't subscribe. I'm not asking for you to subscribe, don't do that, because a subscription is earned however a like is given. With that said, let's roll the video. We're finally able to move on to the collector. And I really don't want to screw this up, so we've done this a few different times, but I want to take a second to just kind of walk through what we did. It was a bit unorthodox, but I think it's pretty uh, replicatable. Is that a word? Duplicatable? Google that one. We found our center line, and really that collector, it's going to split the midline, so your grates are going to be mid-level of the tank, right? Dead center. And that collector, you want that collector to split the the uh, middle of your racks. I want to take a second to explain how we ensured that this line is centered because we wrapped this line around and I'm going to make it permanent here at some point but we we brought this line all the way around and this is our center line so everything we're doing like with these smokers you, you got to find center and then everything you do, you're working off center with the doors, with the collector, even with the firebox, everything's off center. So I just want to explain kind of how we brought this line across. So up here, we found drop dead center vertically on the top of the smoker. So I have a line, you can't see it. We snapped a line and that's dead center. And so over here from this line, all the way down is 29 and a half inches from drop dead center all the way down is 29 and a half inches and that is center point or at least we think that's center point of the tank so for the collector we just did the same deal to make sure that this line was accurate got on our drop dead center up top brought it down 29 and a half inches we made a mark and then we just took our little bad mama jamma link is in the description you'll need one of these if you don't have one of these don't even try to build your smoker so bad mama jamma we marked our line over here center and we just wrapped this puppy around and met it so we drew that line brought it there drew the line here wrapped it around Voila. So what we did is this is midline here and I just basically took a line I came up three inches and then I came down three inches and so now we have a six inch collector and we took this puppy and we essentially just wrapped it around. As you just saw we um, were making our initial marks for the collector. And so this is really important because we put some asterisks in the video um, where I verbally said three inches and we put an asterisk that said four inches. And I just wanna take a second to explain what that means. So we have our center line and that center line is the bottom of our doors. So you can make your door as tall as you want but you need to find center. So you have to set the bottom of your door center. And then how tall you want your door is a different story. You, you, you can make that up. But based off the bottom of your door, so that center line, I wanted my collector to be eight inches tall. So off the center, I went four inches up and then four inches down. And that gave me the height for my collector. I started off three and three, so a six inch collector. And then I, I kind of drew it out and I stepped back and I looked at it. It just didn't look big enough. So I went back, I remeasured it, and we decided to go eight inches. And then last thing really quick while I'm looking at it. 
So you'll see where I start cutting is the outside right side of the collector. And you'll see between where I'm cutting and where my door um, edge is, there's a gap. And I don't remember how long we made that gap. My point is this, how long you make your collector is up to you, right? Now keep in mind with the way that these smokers work, you want it to draw like Picasso. You want it to draw a lot of air and velocity. And so bigger is probably better. Um, so for us, we just eyeballed how wide we wanted it. I guess what I'm saying is there's no science behind that. I decided I want an eight inch collector. I eyeballed how, how wide I wanted it. I sharpied in that, that rectangle and I started cutting. So that's what we got. Behold, my bath water. So here, here's what you're looking at. I got a piece of cardboard and what I did is I just traced a bottom arch, which will be the bottom of my collector because we need the curvature of the tank to cut out. And so I just shoved cardboard in there, I took a marker, and I drew the curvature, and then I'm about to cut it out. When I move this cardboard away, you'll see the actual piece that, I, that I'm working off of. Um, do it. Make sure you do it on a pretty big piece of cardboard, um, but for video purposes, that one I just cut is an example. This is the real deal. So you can see that bottom arch would have been what I just cut. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, trace out my collector. So right here I'm deciding how, how high up I want my smokestack on that bottom plate. I think we went two inches um, back away from the smoker just to give some play there. I didn't want my smokestack to be touching my smoker. So we, we backed it off about two inches. Again, to reiterate, I already did this in full. So all these lines I already drew, and I'm just going back over. And right here, I'm marking either side of the pipe because what I'm about to do is draw some vertical lines. I just want to give myself some boundaries. And when I say boundaries, what I mean is I want to make sure that that uh, smokestack is as even north, south, east, west as humanly possible. Now, when you say humanly, there's room for error, and that's fine. Nothing's going to be perfect, but um, we're getting it close. And so I'm drawing as straight a line as I can based off those markings that I just made inside of the pipe. So made made the markings in the pipe, pulled the pipe away, and now I'm drawing vertical lines off of those markings to give me east and west. Uh, what I'm about to do is set my pipe inside those boundaries and now I'm just fitting it up. So we got our two inches away from the tank, we got our left line, we got our right line, and I'm just making sure that I like the way that it looks, like the fitment, making sure everything's good. Now at this point, we make the collector a collector. I'm just drawing my lines to connect uh, the bottom plate. I'm just, I'm essentially making it unified. 
And so I'm drawing a line based off of about the midpoint of the pipe down to the base of what will be or the point of my um, collector plate on the bottom. And you'll see in the future, I'm going to essentially trace this on a steel and I'll cut it on a steel. But as you can see now, we have a fully unified bottom collector plate. And as I was saying, we just traced it directly onto some steel. Now, uh, pro tip from an amateur, power wash off that steel because there's a bunch of dirt and rust on mine and that does not help for drawing lines that stay when you're taking a, a cutoff wheel to it. So I'd probably power wash it, throw a little soap on there, wash it off, get it nice and clean, and then make your cut. Also, that way you're not breathing in rust dust like I was. And that is the bottom plate of our collector. And I, uh, I'm just taking a cutoff wheel to it. I'm pretty proud, y'all. Every last piece of this smoker, other than my firebox door, is hand cut. We did not use a plasma cutter for anything. Um, now, some professionals that might be watching this might say, you're just an idiot, dude, and maybe I am. But we hand cut it all. So creating the top plate is really, really easy. As you can see, I have the smokestack centered right on that last piece of cardboard that I made. And what you'll do is you're, you're going to draw a U on the inside edge of the smokestack and you'll cut that out. And so as you can see it laying on the steel up top, this is the final uh, product for the top of the collector template. And then all I did was I took our cardboard template for that top piece the same way I did the bottom. And I just matched it on that steel, traced it, and now I'm cutting it. It got a little tricky because we're using a cutoff wheel. And to cut a semicircle in steel with a cutoff wheel is not easy, but I just kind of finagled it. Um, and it worked out flawlessly. All that's left to do is cut out the smokestack. So what I did was I took that top template with the semicircle, and I went eight, inch, eight inches up on the base of the smokestack, and then I shoved that C cutout into the pipe to merge them together. I took a Sharpie, and I just traced around that semicircle, and I traced it onto the pipe, and now I'm just cutting it, and that'll give me the cutout for uh, the smokestack. Here's where the rubber hits the road, trying to put steel cutouts on steel that was not meant to go together, and it ain't the easiest, but we got it done. So as you can see, we're taking that bottom, that base cutout, and now we're just laying a real easy tack, and we're just getting it tacked in, and we're making sure that um, you know all sides are merged together properly. And what I did actually was and this might be a little bit too detailed but we instead of putting it to the outside of the tank we actually set it on top of the lip of the tank so we we kind of push it into the tank a little bit and then i figured in the moment that we could just any excess metal that was left over we could just cut and shave it off and now we're just making sure that it's all level um, left, right, up, down, because keep in mind, you know, we're going to put a, I think it's like seven or eight foot tall steel pipe on top of that for the smokestack. And so we want to make sure that it's as center as we could possibly get it. We looked at it, it, it wasn't perfect. And so we're just kind of playing with it there. Remember, it's tacked in, it's not an official, the, the well's not fully set. So we got some play. So now we're just kind of fine tuning it. And in retrospect, I can tell you nothing's really ever going to be perfect as you're building it in the moment. You're going to try to get everything perfect and try to get as close to perfect as you can, but it won't be. So don't worry about it.
onto the top plate. This one got a little hairy. It's uh, it, it, man, it's just really hard to get steel, you know, perfectly cut without a plasma cutter or some kind of fancy table. So we may do with what we had, but as you can see, we're just trying to fit that top plate over the outside curvature of um, our tank and we're using that level again we just we really want to make sure that it's as level as it can be to receive the uh, the smokestack we were a little I say a little honestly I, I, I was a lot off so I needed to take my little tiger paw deal and I, I, sh I just shaved off a lot of that inside play. So there's a lot of extra steel that just wasn't making that fitment right. And that's fine. Again, this entire process, unless you're a professional, then most of this process will be new to you. So like I said, just taking off some of that slack, trying to make sure that that fitment is as best as we can get it. And it was pretty easy. It just, just took a little time. Um, so don't worry if it's not right the first time. You can always shave some steel off. Hey, uh, as long as my finger's not about to get tacked to this thing. Well, we can see if you got dry gloves and if I go like that. Ah! Alright, pack it. Turn it that way? I don't know. Because it got skinnier. The gap got smaller. I think you did. Well, let's put That's her good. other one there. It does need to rock that way a little bit. And the bottom needs to kick in a little bit. Kick in. We're almost done. So here's a good inside shot. And if you were curious, you know, how do you, how do we get the side pieces? As you can see, there is an open gap on the side. So the far side's covered, this side's open. All we did was just measure that rectangle, draw it on a piece of steel and cut it. And you can see me down there, I'm just taking a tiger paw um, to that steel and I'm just getting it cut down. And it was just a game of take the rectangle, put it on the side, if there's too much to play, shave it down and do it again and again and again until you get a damn near perfect fit and then you tack it in. So it's That's pretty it. easy to get those side pieces. That's the one. And as you can see, hmm. oh, um, this is kind of no. a, actually this oh. is a really good angle of how that process worked. I just been shaving it and shaving it and that, that edge was just a little too tall. So I'm going back at it, knocking it down. And then <laughs> we're just hoping that the next time we put it back, it fits better. We'll see if it fits better like it's growing it's on the same end we liked it so we're tacking I'm just reaching on the inside of the tank and I have a I have a magnet arrow you can see that magnet arrow sitting on the outside I have another one on the inside and I'm just holding that steel in place so that might could tack it in and uh, I mean that's pretty much how we did our collector there I can push it like that. That looks fairly decent straight right there. I'm going to push it in a little bit. Yeah. I can only go so far. It hits you want to push steel. it in while I push it down? I'm going to put a tack on the pipe. Okay. All right, yeah. Come over and push her down. And if we don't get it, we'll... Give me a little... Yep, okay. Hold your hair back. Mm -hmm. Okay, as soon as I get done, take the hammer whop right where I tack, right? One, two, three. Good.
time to bring in the mother load. Keep in mind, family, we don't have all the fancy machinery, so we got a pickup truck, we got two dudes, and a camera woman. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> Anyways, this is a, off the top of my head, this is a Schedule 40 um, 8-inch pipe. Oh, man, I want to say it's 8-inch. I'm pretty solid on that. Schedule 40, 8-inch pipe, and it's uh, 7 foot long. It came in two pieces. I highly suggest that. Looking, you know, retrospect, I would do it that same way again uh, because it, it allowed us to fit up that, that first piece almost perfectly, you know, and, the, and it's manageable. I couldn't have, I couldn't imagine having, having to have done it the way we did it with that whole pipe. If you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but what we did is we tacked on little posts and the post stuck up vertically on either side. We did three actually. We did one on the right side, one on the left side, and one on the front. And then all we did is we slid the big pipe on top of the little pipe and it fit flush right into where those posts are. And now all Mike is doing is making some strategic tacks while I keep an eye on that magnetic level. And based off where he's tacking, I'm kind of pushing and pulling the pipe to get it as level as we can. Um, so we got it level, we were happy with where it was set, and so now Mike is laying in the uh, the final welds, and we felt really good about it, so he sent it. And as you can see, family, here's the final product, and we were happy. That's it, that's how we did our collector. I hope that that was insightful, I hope it was informational, and I hope you enjoyed it. Now, when you're editing these videos, of course, we edit out all the, you know, the yelling and the frustration and the times where it gets hard. So keep in mind, that process was not easy. It wasn't easy. There was a lot of tweaking, but it's definitely doable. So yeah, that, that's the video. And we're excited, obviously, about turning out more videos. So I appreciate you guys hopping on the Meet and Greet channel and uh, showing your boy Frizz some love. Of course... We just, we weren't able to film every last little thing. It, I think it's, it would have been impossible to do that, but we tried to get as much as we could. Now, if you find yourself out there building a smoker like this one and you have questions and I didn't cover it, um, definitely drop me a comment and I promise you, I'll get you an answer. That's my promise to you, I'll get you taken care of. I'll spare you all the like, comment, subscribe and all that stuff, but if you wanna do it, I'm not gonna say no. Until next time, mean greet, over and out.